Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Thank you for making time to be here. We are about to start our lesson discussion. Uh, but before we go into anything, I'll ask Maurice to pray for us. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Most gracious and everlasting Father in heaven, we come before you this hour to hear from you and to pause a little while, dear Lord, just to take a keen listen to what your word says to us this morning. We uh, present ourselves before you, dear Lord, that you will use us as a panel to guide the listeners and those who are gathered here in this auditorium through this week's lesson, talking about husbands and wives together at the cross. I pray that your spirit divine will influence us heavenward, even as we hear from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So today we start our lesson number 10, Husband and Wife Together at the Cross. Paul is still our author. The book is still the book of Ephesians. We go to chapter 5 from verse 20 downwards, 20 downwards, and it's going to be an interesting uh, subject to go through. Um, the book Adventist Tom says, out of the heart are the issues of life and the heart of the community of the church and of the nation is the household. The well-being of the society, the success of the church, the prosperity of the nation depends about their home influences. And that is why today we are just going to see how can we make a uh, our nation better through the family. I'm joined by a wonderful team of finalists and I'd ask them to say hi to you, starting with the other lady in this panel. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Thank you for joining us. My name is Becky Omondi. Be blessed. Karibu sana. Yes, Professor. Happy Sabbath. My name is Tizi Nagong, an elder in New Life, one of the panelists. Karibu sana. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. The Lord is good and that is his need. Thank you so much. I'm Eldo Pere Nyaroya, a member of this church. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. My name is Ongala Morris, a member of this church and a panelist. Karibu sana. So, uh, I'm also welcoming our online congregation to join us in this discussion. Our memory text comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Husbands, love your wife, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be the holy and without that Sorry, but that she should be holy and without blemish. As we have realized from this lesson, Paul has been building the theme of unity. He started from unity between the Gentiles and the Jewish. He moved to the church, and now he has moved to be more specific, more intentional in the sense that he is handling the family. And he's, to, to be more specific, he's now handling the husband and the wife. Now, um, through this lesson, we are going to look at the unity in the family. We are going to look at how to keep unity in a Christian family and what it means to do it in the Lord. And we are going to look at family as per the original, as per the perspective of God. And we move quickly to the Sunday part, counsel to the Christian wives. And this is an interesting part because you're talking about submission, and we are talking about submission at this time where women are so empowered. I don't think that time where they were empowered as now. They know their rights, they are working, they are able to bring something to the table. Becky, please start by defining for us what is submission and how are we, what counsel is Paul giving to Christian wives in regards to submission? Um, thank you very much, Rumona. Uh, my pedestrian understanding of submission is being subject to allowing your will mm. to, allowing another person's will to take over yours. Mm. And uh, by that very definition, when you hear someone telling you to submit, mm. 
you almost are going to be up in arms because you perceive that your rights are being taken away. But what exactly is God saying and what is Paul saying to the people of Ephesus? Before we actually get to understand what he is speaking about in Ephesians 5, we recall in lesson 8, he's talking about changed perspectives and lives. And in that particular lesson, he addressed the contemporary issues that we deal with. He addressed worldviews, lifestyles, cross-cultural missions, critical contextualization, and conversion. And he used one term, transformation. So much so that he told us to put away the old corrupt self and put in and put on Christ. So we are operating on the premise that this particular council is for someone who has read chapter 4 and lived it. So that even the lesson writer appreciates that the council is not just to anyone, mm. but it's for Christian wives. Yeah. And so we are dealing with a transformed Christian wife. And why is that important? Because on twofold, in the first instance, Paul brings the perspective that even the marriage setup is a point of evangelism. In the sense that the Christian wife who carries herself according to the counsel of God is by her conduct able to win over the husband to the word of God. At the same time, when the household, the family, which is the basic unit of society, is conducted in a manner that pleases the Lord, then the church will be overly empowered for mission as it were. So what exactly is Paul saying? Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, that uh, a text we love to read, that submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. And you ask me rightly, what is submission? Mm. Which we have said. Mm. But then one would ask, what if you're dealing with a foolish husband? Of course, such a statement, foolish husband, is is cringeworthy. How would you perceive that your husband is foolish? Mm. But for the sake of discussion, if you look at the book of Acts chapter 5, mm. it tells us what submission is not. Mm. In the story of Ananias and Sapphira, mm. we see this couple, while well, the church was at its nascent stage, they actually collude to defeat the cause of God by lying. The first person to come through was Ananias. And when he was asked about the sale of property, he simply said that is the entire amount they brought about. The wife simultaneously comes a few minutes later and says that that is the entire sum of that which we had sold. The wife was not under compulsion. He, she knew that which was to be done. She knew what is right, but she chose to follow her husband contrary to God. So the counsel to Christian wives is not to submit our hus to our husbands in the course of evil but to submit to the husband in the Lord, meaning God is above and the husband is beneath. And this is for good order. How will it be our homes if each one of us is the leader? God is a God of order. And he has allowed us to happen in our homes and our families that we may take it up. I know we have situations where there is violence, there is abuse, and all manner of domestic mishaps. But God is trying to bring to view and Paul is trying to speak to a converted people and telling them that insofar as it's in, 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 in a manner that is not displeasing to God, Amen. then submit to your spouse, Amen. submit to your husband. Amen. And that mutuality, you submit one to another, Amen. submit to your wife. Thank, submit to your husband, pardon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for just bringing a clarification of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Because I've heard people saying that it does not say that submit to the wife. It, you submit to one another to bring in equality. But we'll see. Did God create equality or what did God actually just create? Elder, what are your comments on the Sunday part? Cancel to the wives. Thank you so much, Sister Romana. Mm. Um, Paul is giving advice for them. Mm very spiritual advice for here to uh, the Christian wives, mm -hmm. but also giving an extension to the husbands. Mm -hmm. That submission is not a one-way traffic, mm -hmm. but it is a two-way traffic. Mm -hmm. 
it is give and take, mm. but in the fear of the Lord. Mm. If um, the wife is so spiritual mm. and very humble, but the husband happens to be harsh, mm. arrogant, mm. irresponsible, mm. not caring, mm. not protecting, not cherishing the wife, mm. in this situation, this would not be uh, a husband that should be respected mm. by the wife mm. or would expect submission. And therefore, the submission here is uh, considered from a spiritual perspective, mm -hmm. not from the utterly secular perspective where it is the servant and the ruler, mm. uh, and the ruler takes mm. charge mm. and orders uh, the way the ruler wants. Mm. So submission here, especially for our contemporary situation, mm. uh, we, it is a word that has been misused, mm. uh, where people can be reckless uh, and even uh, cause chaos, quarrel their wives irresponsibly without respect. And therefore, for us to enjoy um, the intention mm -hmm. and the aim of marriage as was designed in Eden, is that we should enjoy and be happy together. And you can only do so if you feel that this is somebody almost like your own body, mm -hmm. your own flesh, your own uh, uh, self. So you cannot hate yourself. You can, but you can only submit to yourself. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. You've said rightly from the spiritual aspect, and I'd ask Elda that women or that platforms would say <laughs> that uh, you only submit to a man who is providing. <laughs> yeah, so if you're, he's not able to submit, if, no, if he's not able to provide, how can you submit to them? If this man does not need to approach that, given that Elder has told us rightly so, that we need to submit in the Lord. Uh, thank you so much. Mm. I think the last statement sums it up in the, Lord. in the Lord. And Sister Becky had given a typical example of Ananias and Sapphira. Mm. And we also saw, we have also seen in the Bible, in the man is wise and knows the course of God and chooses to go the way of the Lord and she brings uh, safety to the family. Mm. Uh, I want to, so in this case, the underlying principle, the LCM here is in the Lord. In the Lord. And as Zelda said, mm. it is not submission like to some, one is inferior and another one is superior. Mm. Uh, you see, for our bosses, we can submit simply even if you are differing in opinion or it is you do not want it but because you are obliged mm -hmm. but here we have counseled to do it in the lord just like we would do it to christ mm -hmm. and you see in our relationship with christ it is also not pegged on on that fear perspective it is out of love mm -hmm. uh, another thing to add what i am seeing from this part like you had rightly said when we started, Paul is now going, he brought the point, he has now come to the church, mm -hmm. he has talked of unity of the church. Mm -hmm. Last week we looked at living wisely and we realized that we have to know that there is God because a fool says in his heart there is no God. But a wise person now knows there is God. So we have to live and we saw some of the things which are detrimental to the unity of the church. And Paul dwelt among a lot on them, e.g. sexual imp uh, impurity, and then also doctrinal issues. That is why we are saying, do not allow yourself to be toast. Those are critical to the unity of the church. But now, it takes it another notch higher, down to the family. Mm -hmm. And now helps us to understand that if the family is not strong, even the church will not be strong. And what is the danger? The church is God's agency on earth for the salvation of mankind. And so Paul delves and gives us the dangers which are there and he prescribes solutions. One of the dangers is lack of submission. And he tells us it is good for you to submit in the Lord. Recently, I read something in the WhatsApp group. And it was saying 
it was saying that in Malawi, somebody published a book. And the title of the book was How to Manage Your Wife. And then it was the, the WhatsApp story was saying in three months, the person had sold over a million copies. <laughs> then after a month, he came and said, no, 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 there was a correction. It was a typo. The right title should have been how to manage your wealth. It should have been how to manage your wealth, not how to manage your wife. And uh, amazingly, after three months, there were only three copies sold. Yeah, what does that one show? <laughs> it shows that truly there is a need on the family. Yeah, yeah. And that is why there are many marriage therapists and to uh, 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 to uh, people who talk, who give uh, uh, talks on marriages mm. because there is a need. That one to me justifies why is Paul is giving counsel to wives, to husbands, but in this context, to wives, because it is the foundation upon which mm. even the church is built. And if it is not properly done or anchored, the global agenda which God has for the salvation of mankind mm. will be hindered. Amen. Thank you. The only condition attached to submission is in the Lord. We move to the Monday part. Maurice, I know you have a comment, but you will give it. <laughs> the church as the bride of Christ. This is really, really the foundation of this um, lesson. How is the church, why is Paul delaboring elder to just compare the church as the bride of Christ and now to us, more specifically, family, husbands and wives? Uh, thank you so much. Um, Christ realizes that in order to uh, get the people back to him, mm. it is only through the union between husband and, and wife. Mm -hmm. But it goes with a price tag on it. Mm. And for Christ, uh, it is clear that unless mm. he is able to give himself mm. to the church for the salvation of mankind, mm it would not be possible. Mm. And at the cross, he gave it all. Mm. He gave it all. So we find that Christ loved the church so much. Yes. And through this love to the church, mm. which is comparable to the bride here, mm -hmm. Christ himself being the bridegroom, mm. he, gave it, he, he gave it all, his whole life. And in so doing, he has shown love for us. Mm. And we are advised Husbands, mm -hmm. we should love our wives just like Christ did it. Mm -hmm. And this is how even husbands and wives together at the cross mm -hmm. is having the serious convergence. Number two, we find that having um, defined himself as the loving bridegroom, he also presents himself, he gives himself the bride price, which is actually his life. Amen. The Amen. question is today, how many of us as men, married men, are ready to give their lives for the sake of their wives? How many are ready to die even for their wives? Mm. For example, we know that uh, usually uh, from a biological perspective, there, there is very little compatibility in terms of organ, uh, for organ transplant uh, between a husband and a wife because they come from diverse uh, background. However, in the event that they were compatible, am I ready to give, say, one, one of my kidneys to my wife mm. without any issue? Mm. That is the extent that Christ is demonstrating. Paul is saying that uh, Christ loved us so much. Number two, is not just loving and ready to give the bright price, but also preparing. Mm -hmm. uh, before you get to a marriage, uh, there is preparation. Ordinarily, in our context, you'd find that the bride would have preparation from the bride side. And the bridegroom would also have some preparation and counseling from the bridegroom side. But in this case, Jesus Christ prepares the bride himself. So we are encouraged that as we anticipate to have a Christian family, 
we should go a long way to prepare. Mm. This preparation does not mean we should go into early involvement in an un, un, uh, faithful sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are supposed to prepare yourself and anticipate with the anxiety, the spiritual anxiety to be together one day as a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Then um, through this, Christ uh, sanctifies the church and also cleanses the church. Mm -hmm. In, the so, in so doing spiritually, we are supposed to prepare our fiancés in a spiritual manner in anticipation of the final marriage uh, wedding day. Uh, in, the old, in the past, this was referred to betrothal, mm -hmm. and it's equivalent to engagement. Mm -hmm. So it was a very elaborate plan to allow this the bride and the bridegroom to understand each other from a Christian perspective. And last but not least, we are told that now Jesus adorns and also uh, prepares the, the church for the final wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. And in the actual wedding ceremony, this um, comes also with clear indication that indeed this is the climax of everything. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is coming to claim claim the church for himself. Mm -hmm. Just like when you have been preparing for a wedding, on the material day, you are now ready to behold uh, your bride mm -hmm. and cherish, love, protect, and you commit yourself. There's a word of promise here that I'm going to take care of you mm -hmm. and give you my best mm -hmm. so that the happiness that you realize would continue forever. So love at the beginning should also be love at the end. Amen. Despite Amen. the suffering and the challenges that are associated ma with marriage, mm. we should always reflect how was it at the beginning mm. so that we can sustain a marital relationship. It's a companionship, it is um, a partnership mm. and a help. It's your helper. Mm. And in this case, you find that as, you, as your helper joins you, mm. he joins you not only as an outsider, mm. but as your part of your body, mm -hmm. part of yourself, mm -hmm. and part of your bone. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, because this study is in two parts, I'll just like ask Elder Perry to continue with part two because before we can give our panel comments. Elder uh, has, thank you, thank you. Just before uh, you go, <laughs> Elder has rightly told us about the spiritual preparation. But when you move to part two, we are talking about, you're moving, Paul is moving us to Corinthians. And during that time, it was okay to, to be, as the husband, you had the legal right to beat your wife, your children, to do whatever you did with them. And you'll be within the correctness of the law, just to say so. But as you speak as Christ, as the church of the bride of Christ, please tell, talk to us about how God is treating us. Is he jealous and what kind of jealousness is this? And also just talk to us about the craftiness that the snake was able to use to deceive Eve and our modern, the modern day craft, the craftiness that exists in the modern times, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, to me, this is the gist of the whole uh, study yeah, this week. Yeah. The church mm -hmm. as the bride of Christ. And we were told that the, the topic was husband and wife at the cross, mm -hmm. meaning all of us are united there. And mm -hmm. building from what elders brought, you see the level of preparation which mm -hmm. goes into it. Mm -hmm. But you see there is a small shift, like, unlike in the case, like Elder was saying, in the normal context, it is the aunties, the mothers who prepare the bride. Exactly. In this case, it is Christ, Christ preparing the bride, which is the church, mm -hmm. and is the one who pays, is the one who bathes it. Now, uh, I want to us to take our minds to the time when Queen Vashti resigned mm -hmm. from being the queen of uh, King Asherus. And when before uh, Queen Esther came to the throne, you realize that it would take a period nearly a year mm. for a queen 
the replacement to be prepared. It went even to the food they were eating. It permitted to all facets of their lives for one to be qualified to be a queen. All that preparation. That one should just inform us of the level of preparation we should be as the bride of the lamb. The preparation which should go into it. And remember, Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you. You know, we live in a world of many promises, promise makers and promise breakers. And our country is notorious with that. We have many promises and promise breakers. But one thing which gives me joy, when God gives a promise, he means what he says and he says what he means. So when he says, I am going to prepare a place for you, it gives me the assurance he will come. But before he comes, there is preparation which has to go into it because there are many dangers. There are many dangers to this marriage institution. He gives us the tips and tells us to prepare. And then there will be the great consummation which will come, which to me, when we present the bride to himself, that one to me is the great day he will come to take us home. If there are things which I remember vividly, I know there are very many ceremonies we usually remember, like graduation. Mm. But to me, one which I remember very well was 21st of May, some years ago, when the day I was, being going, I was going to be baptized. The deacons and the deaconesses lined. They were all dressed in white. Deacons on one side, deaconesses on one side, and then the baptismal candidates, we are in the middle. And then we are singing some songs. Polo wana ukongoe, polo wana ukongoe. That means we will be flying like eagles going to heaven when we're being led to the lake. I am telling you that day remains vividly in my brain. The second one is the day of marriage when I was wedding. It, it is imprinted. It even supersedes the graduation. That means to me, uh, that to me brings the day very well and gives me the insight that as a church, before Christ comes mm -hmm. to take us home, which I know is sure, unlike uh, uh, in, uh, in the world where we make promises and full of promise breakers, for him, I'm sure it is going to be true and yes. And that is why this song, song 212, stanza 3, it is almost time for the Lord to come. It says, it must be time for the waiting child to cast a pride away with guarded loin and bunny lambs to look for the breaking of the day. That to me is a wake-up call that as a body corporate, individual and body corporate, mm. there is the great wedding of the Lamb coming. But then before then, we have to prepare being aware of the dangers which the evil one is being, bringing our way, meaning we have to support one another. Mm. Those who are uh, being affected, we must counsel, we must offer shoulder for them to lean on because the devil is not happy. Because if we get it right in the marriage, mm. even the wedding of the lamb will be well. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Before Maurice, please come in and just talk to us your, your thoughts. The church as the bride of Christ and the preparation aspect because we, as ladies we spend so much time preparing for deca, the gown and everything else. Then we forget to prepare on the marriage. Please talk to us about that, relating it to Christ seeing us as his bride. All right, thank you, Rumona. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a few thoughts also on counsels to Christian wives, and the quick way, Time. <laughs> the quick way for, for us to look at it is mm -hmm. that imagine a human body with two heads. Okay. A human body with two heads walking. That's an abnormality. That's I mean, scary. it's unheard of. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the same reason why Paul is insisting that we need to look at the relationship between Christ as the head of, mm. of, of the church mm. and, and equate it to the husband being the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. And, and, and if, if we look at it that way, mm. submission will be much easier. Mm. 
And if you look at it that way, it behooves us to think also that it is difficult, almost impossible, to submit to your husband mm. or to your wife because submission is both ways from Ephesians chapter 5. Mm. Um, it, 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 it behooves us to think that it's impossible to submit to one another mm. before you first submit to Christ. Mm -hmm. Just imagine a triangle with Christ at the top, husband to the, to the right, mm. and, and wife to the, to the mm. left. Mm. And therefore, the two must meet at point Jesus mm. before they can come back and interact as human beings. Amen. I think that Amen. is very instructive for us to know. Mm. But uh, Christ as the bride, uh, I mean, ch the church as the bride of Christ, um, in Proverbs 31, it starts by saying in verse 10, who can find a prudent wife? Mm -hmm. Which means the husband seeks the wife mm. and he, it ends up by him finding the wife. Mm. Now, Christ loved us when we were yet in sin. Mm. The Bible says so. So he sought us mm. when we were in sin. Mm. And this is the point to start from, mm. that Christ actually loved us when we were in sin. Mm. And then he goes ahead through his redemptive power mm. to, you know, prepare us. And in the ancient times, in the times in which Paul was writing, um, we know that it was the, the, the parents of the bride, even today, who presented the, the bride to the groom. Mm. But now Paul imagines the groom presenting to himself a the bride right. that he himself has prepared. Mm. And I think we need as a church, as mm -hmm. a Lopere puts it, a body corporate, but also as individuals mm -hmm. to first of all submit ourselves to Christ. That way it will be much easier for us mm -hmm. to, to, to first of all be, you know, be molded by Christ and mm -hmm. also to submit ourselves to each other. Those Amen. are my few comments because of time on mm -hmm. the two, on the three days. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Um, I just want to remind our online congregation to be part of our conversation, please. Uh, feel free to give us your comments and we will sample them out. Becky, in just one minute, what are your thoughts on the Tuesday and Wednesday part? Um, thank you. Uh, two things stand uh, out. Mm. One, Christ has prepared a bride for himself. And Maurice has rightly stated that Christ sought us when we were yet in sin. Mm. The question that emanates from there is, do we ever count the cost? of what it takes exactly. to be in a marriage relationship. Mm. Do we take time to think through the obligation, the role, the mission at hand, mm. and the th things that the Lord requires of us as we get into the union, mm. so that when we are there, mm. we are not surprised at what happens, because we had already considered that should such and such a thing happen, this is the way out. Mm. Now Christ decided to die for us even while we are yet in sin. Mm. Another thing, the wife is being told that just as the church is subject to Christ, mm -hmm. let the wife be subject to the husband in everything. And my question is, if the submission of the church to Christ is the best practice of submission, is the church today submitting to Christ? Mm -hmm. Could it be that the failure of the church to submit to Christ has resulted in the failure of wives to get a best practice on submission? So much so that we are now turning to the world for best practice. Mm. Because the very place we have come to be taught on how to submit, people are conveniently avoiding the commandments. Mm. People are conveniently avoiding the principles. Embezzlement of funds, corruption, immorality abounds even in the very place of church. So we ask, is this the standard? Now if we are not submitting at home, could it, could, it could be that this is the standard the church has set. And I think it's a time we call ourselves to a meeting, individually and corporately, and set the standard right. Because Christ has not prepared us in sin. He has prepared us out of sin and given us grace to remain holy and blameless and live soberly and righteously in this present Amen. age. With Christ it is possible. Amen. Thank you. Uh, are we perhaps just not... Have we perhaps forgotten to count the cost of submission or the cost of just being subject to Christ? As a church, are we submitting? Are we living up to it so that people can actually say, uh, as Christ loves the church, are we are submitting? The cost is the question. We move to the Wednesday part. Love 
your wife as you do to yourself. And this is just speaking to the husbands in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 all the way to 30. Maurice, please take us through that. Perhaps the best point to start is by reading that verse, uh, yes. those two verses, Ephesians mm. chapter 5 and verse 28 to 30. This is what it says in my version. Mm. Um, so ought men to love their wives as, they, as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, um, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Amen? Amen. Now, in the Greek or Roman times, and this is the audience that Paul was writing to, mm -hmm. it was a legal uh, thing, you know, for a, a man to hate his wife. Mm -hmm. And not just hate, to go ahead and express that hate by beating, even killing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. his wife mm -hmm. and children. Mm -hmm. And that was so gross. Although people frowned upon it, but nothing really could be done to such a man. Mm. And, 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 and I think the, the writer brings that particular story for us to try and juxtapose with our times. Because today, we live in a, in a society where women are so empowered, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And women, act, not just women, but even the children mm. know their rights. I have a friend of mine in another mm. country whom when he wants to punish his children, he brings them back to Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> he brings them back to Kenya and, and he gives them a thorough beating before mm. they can go back. <laughs> and so when they, okay. when they uh, start manifesting those untoward behaviors, he reminds them, do you want to go to the airport? Mm. Do you want to go to Kenya? And mm. then they plead, Daddy, no, we are not going to Kenya and we are not doing it again. But, but even the children know their rights so much so that the government protects them. But this is just, I mean, this is just the, um, um, can I say, what we see, but not exactly what happens in our private spaces. Mm. Because even in the church today, there are reports of men still beating their, their wives, wives, physically mm. abusing. Mm. And abuse is not healthy in any relationship, mm. whether it's, um, whether, be it, be it a, 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 a husband-wife relationship, a father-child relationship, or um, you know, a workmate or colleague kind of relationship at the place of work. Abuse is not good, be it emotional, physical, or otherwise. Mm. So there are still reports of abuse happening, and a lot of marriages are struggling. Mm. And during the time when we were having this uh, uh, preparation, you remember, mm. uh, I think it's Sister Becky who raised a question that are the older women playing their part. It's actually in, in the book of Titus, yes, chapter exactly. 2. Yes, exactly. From mm. the book of Titus. Mm. Are, all, are the older women in the church today playing their part mm. in mentoring and preparing mm. the younger women, especially those who are looking uh, forward to getting into marriages? Mm. And are, are, are the older men in our church doing the same today? Because looking at the reality of the matter, we are manifesting some aspects of the Greece and uh, the, the Greek mm. and the Romans mm. in the time of Paul, but we're just doing it in a 21st century kind of exactly. style uh, so that we are not bringing it out there, but mm. every so often our ladies come out with swollen eye faces and black eyes and, and we think that is something not to be frowned upon. Mm. The ultimate example of, of love and of uh, submission to one another mm. is the example that, the, that Christ has as, as demonstrated by loving the church. Mm. Now, if you really love your body, mm -hmm. any part of your body, mm. of course, no one can say that they don't love their bodies. Mm. But we see people going ahead and... Um, but uh, then, nowadays, you know, I see men even doing pedicures as, as a source of self-love. Yes. <laughs> but they have a twisted sense of love for self because they think when they pierce and they draw things and tattoo and mm. cause some affliction and some sort exactly. of pain mm. to their skin, mm then they think that is their way of loving themselves. Mm. But the purity of love dictates automatically that you cannot hurt yourself. Exactly. And that mm. if that is the, the, the model, therefore, that we need to, to, to follow, then it behooves both of us, both the man and the woman, to, uh, to love each other to the extent that we are so sensitive to what hurts the other person. What happens most of the time is the lack of sensitivity. Mm. Because we, we end up just uh, moving with the flow, um, 
uh, consulting the world, watching TV shows on marriage mm. and on sex and mm. on every other thing, and consulting books and, and, and you know, novels that do not glorify God, that do not have biblical principles, just in, you know, in the quest for, for love or for trying to know how to love each other. But the Bible has given us the best example as Christ loved Loves the church. The church. to the extent of dying for the church on the cross. Now, you, you will easily see men or hear men saying that I am willing to die for my wife. But for me, I don't think it's a, a physical death. Mm. I, I don't know if the men in the congregation, if you could be challenged today to hang on the cross for the sake of your wife, I don't know how many of you would uh, take the challenge. Mm. But it's more than that. It's, 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 it's that sacrificial kind of love that puts self aside mm. and you know, prioritizes the other person. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Elder, there's that part that says, sanctify them by the truth. Please talk to us about that in one minute. We have constraints of time. <laughs> uh, th thank you so much. Um, if we read the book of mm. Genesis, uh, chapter 2, verse, um, uh, verse 24, mm. it says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Mm. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Yeah. The level of purity, the, the spiritual purity, the level of righteousness, uh, cleanliness, mm. and the level of um, pre uh, preparedness to receive one another. Mm. Uh, the two of them were pure. And it was a relationship between a man and a, a woman. woman. Not mm. a man and a man. And a man. <laughs> Not a boy and a girl. Or a girl and a girl. Or a girl and a girl. Mm. <laughs> so we are talking of a serious spiritual relationship sanctioned by God, mm. the first marriage. Mm. And the sanctification here is preparation of that kind of family mm. to the level that they would be acceptable before Christ. Amen. And Amen. if they are acceptable before Christ, then mm. also the church, by extension, would be acceptable before Christ. Mm. So we are supposed to offer ourselves with that high level of purity mm. and level of cleanliness before God. And that means, therefore, even the way we conduct and um, uh, work within the church environment is an indication where, whether we are really prepared mm. to meet the bridegroom. Mm. Uh, and that is part of the preparation. Mm. So in a church environment, it's not like a marketplace. Mm -hmm. It is a serious, sacri sacred environment where you are meeting the holy bridegroom, the divine bridegroom. And therefore, when we are properly prepared and sanctified by Jesus Christ himself, mm. who is preparing us to meet him, uh, we shall be acceptable before him. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. We swiftly move to the Thursday part, the one flesh model of marriage. And Elder has rightly told us that this marriage that we are talking about here is not between men, a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, but it is between Adam and Eve. Um, a man and a woman. So the one flesh model of marriage that we are being talked to from the book of Genesis chapter, chapter 2 from verse 15 all the way to 25. Becky, it talks about one flesh. Priest as the bride of Christ and him. Then our marriages become a happy home where Jesus dwells. Amen. And that's really what Paul is meaning to us. So you've today. decided that you're not going to talk about 50-50 because ah, 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 it doesn't even exist. That is not my war. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice, yeah. your thoughts, the one flesh model of marriage. Um, just one thing, one quick thing to, to, to um, emphasize, that the one flesh in marriage, mm. two and joined together becoming one, okay. being an example of Christ mm. being one with, with, with the church mm. transcends even to the Godhead mm. because the, the, the God, the Son, Jesus Christ, did the will of the Father by coming to die for sinners. Mm. 
but even as after he ascended into heaven, he sent us the Spirit who has not contradicted a single thing that mm. he said. So the Spirit of God, which is God, who is God the Spirit, also works in harmony with what Christ is doing or what Christ did for us. And so you realize that the three, the Godhead, are you know are in perfect unity. Mm -hmm. That's the same type of unity that Christ wants to be with. We are to be in with the church and that he counsels us to be in uh, with our spouses. And I think that is instructive. Thank you. Yeah. You bring the, a very interesting perspective of the divinity. And I'm looking at the husband, the wife, and Christ as the head. So, and then there's some sort of divin uh, <laughs> three in one. Just like the divinity is three in one. Yes, Elder Pere. <laughs> uh, I wanted to make comment on love your wife as yourself. Mm. I see it as an element of nurture and care. Okay. The same way we treat our body, we nurture ourselves, we nurture mm. our body. We, so I, when you say love your wife as yourself, or you love your wife as you do to yourself, mm. I look at it from an element of nurture and care. Mm. Tendering it uh, like we tender ourselves. And then the one flesh, I want to reiterate, I've been thinking and wondering, why, why is it that it is only the marriage aspect that the Bible could use to uh, depict the coming of the Lord? Mm -hmm. The coming of the Lord could only be, the only thing they would compare that is the marriage. Mm -hmm. And the unity between the church and Christ could only be compared mm -hmm. to marriage. Mm -hmm. It gives me an uh, insight that uh, truly marriage is a very important institution mm. in the eyes of God. Yeah. That in the entire globe, in the entire universe, there is no any other thing that could be compared, could be used to compare the relationship between the church and Christ other than marriage. Mm. This elevates, and as uh, Elder said, it elevates, it brings us the importance of marriage and the biblical aspect of one man, one wife. You know, we are now in a situation where when you are doing, doing an introduction, you have, if you are saying you are a married person, you have to be categorical. I am so and so married to one female wife. Otherwise, if you don't specify, it might be so. But now the Bible is giving us the true position of marriage, not some things which are uh, rumors, I would say, uh, which are uh, uh, like the beast and the, the things we, uh, which looks like the beast, you see, like Revelation puts. But now gives us the specific what true marriage, marriage is. is. Yeah. And it, uh, it negates, it rebukes all other forms of things which appear to be marriage but not marriage, marriage. but elevated to pre uh, uh, to Edenic Edenic time Amen. what we call the Edenic institution. Thank Amen. You. Thank you so much. Elder, what are your comments on the one flesh model of marriage? One flesh a model of marriage mm. is uh, critical in our life that God clearly wants a man mm. and a woman to be in one flesh. Mm. And it allows room and space mm. for emotional support, mm -hmm. sexual relationship, mm -hmm. and also the nurture and care that Elder was talking about. Mm. This cannot go without the reality of true love mm -hmm. and also respect for one another. Also, the uh, principle, principle of submission, mm -hmm. and, and also accepting that indeed Christ himself is the head of that family as well. He sanctioned that family as a wife and a husband, and even the kids or the, the, the children that come out of that marriage would follow that kind of example. In a church like this, um, Christ is still the head of that family, but the head as the body. Church is the body, 
and, but Christ is the, the head. We form the body. And the body has different organs and parts, the children, the, the adults, and so on. All together, we will be dysfunctional if we don't have the head. We would be dysfunctional if the body is sick in some way. But we are told here, even Jerusalem, when they were in a total abomination, God still loved and cared for them. In our sinful nature, God still receives us. In one flesh model of marriage, wife or husband may have some serious shortcoming. They require uh, counseling support and also advice so that uh, they are on the right trajectory to, the, to, to heaven. Because it's a journey, it's a walk to heaven. Walk in love, walk in wisdom, all the way to heaven. Amen. It cannot work if the wife and the husband do not respect and accept each other in one flesh. And this is um, a spiritual, uh, clean environment, sacred environment that requires no contamination. It also gives us indication that if you are in a married relationship or a marital relationship, that institution is sacred and should be respected. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, this lesson is so wide and we could talk about it I think the whole day and we will not even finish. Huh? So we are really coming to the tail of the lesson. Husbands and wives together at the cross. It's not the husband at the cross alone or the wife at the cross alone. And that just brings me to the point where um, we are facing challenges in our marriages, in our relationships, in our families. And so to speak, we have very many dysfunctional families, very many people hurting in families. But that's not the ideal that Christ wanted. That is not the ideal that was created in Genesis chapter 2. And I'm just asking my panelists to just give like a one minute talk to marriages that are struggling. What hope can we give, you know, struggling in the sense that the husband and the wife is not at the cross, struggling in that there is um, abusive marriage that are existing, struggling in the sense that children cannot even sit in the sitting room with the father and the mother because they are afraid that my mother will do this, my father will do this, and such. There are so many struggles that we are having. Elder has told us that even when the, the Israelites were in captivity, they were struggling, still Christ loved them. Do we experience the same kind of love even today? Starting with you, Maurice, as we go this way. Mm -hmm. Allow me to just read this uh, line from the book Adventist Home, mm -hmm. uh, page 115 and 116. Uh, the very last part of our lesson today, it says, there is one who stands higher than the husband to the wife. It is her redeemer, and her submission to her husband is to be rendered as God has directed, as is fit in the Lord. And I think this is the guiding principle when it comes to um, submission. Mm. And we have agreed today, uh, especially to the husbands listening, that submission is not only to the husband. It's not mm. just the wife to the husband, mm. but also the husband to the wife. Yes. That, that means that the, the, the the wife's position in marriage is not one that is pitiful, one that is not enviable, one that is supposed to be subservient, subservient to, to, the, to, the, to the husband. Rather, it's, um, she is a stakeholder, so to say. Some people give it an analogy of the head and the neck because the, 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 the Bible says that the, the husband is the head. Therefore, the wife must be the neck and the neck is the only part of the body that supports the head directly, mm. all right? Mm. So without the neck, then the There's head no falls head. down. Mm. So I think we need to understand it from that, from that point. But with, with this, with this um, uh, line from Ellen White, it is important for us, and I think we need to really, really emphasize this. It is important for both husband and wife and the body of Christ, which is the church to first submit to Christ. Amen. Because if we do not submit to Christ first, then all the other submissions we're doing will be works, and works alone cannot save. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Yes, hello, Pere. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, from what I get here, which the question which I take individually or personally is, I ask myself as a husband, do I have the sacrificial love to my wife mm -hmm. like Christ had the sacrificial love to the church? Yes. Uh, there was a case where uh, this was also a story that somebody, after coming from church, uh, the wife was shocked. He was so happy. He was so happy. And then the wife asked him, Nani, what is it today? That the preacher, what about the preacher? The preacher, what about the preacher? That the preacher preached today, what did he say? He said, so the, the husband was carrying the wife, carrying the wife. The wife was wondering, hey, my husband has really transformed. But you think the preacher, what did the preacher say? The preacher said, let us carry all our problems to the Lord. So in this case, the, the, wife, was the, the wife was the problem. <laughs> but uh, that should not be the case. Amen. The Amen. question which I take personally is, am I giving the sacrificial love to my wife the same way Christ gave the sacrificial love to the church. Amen. And that is why in, in Revelation, the last chapter 22, it says, the spirit and the bride say, come. come. Let him who here say, come. come. Let him who is thirsty for the water of life, do what? Come. So I want to be in that statement, to be enjoined in that statement, that the, the spirit and the bride say, come. come. Amen. Yeah. The sacrificial aspect. Elder? <laughs> uh, uh, as articulated in um, Fundamental Beliefs uh, number 23, mm. uh, marriage is a divine institution and also affirmed by Christ himself. And a husband or a wife are usually chosen by God for individuals. Mm. If you are prayerful, you would get the right husband. Yeah. If you are prayerful, you'd get the right hus uh, uh, husband or wife. And therefore, my encouragement, especially to the youth, that let's be prayerful about this matter. Amen. A Amen. strong church depends on strong family units. Mm -hmm. And even for those, who are, those of us who are married, um, let's, let's reflect on Jesus Christ as the head of that family. And let's be there through love and submission as we have been taught today because we are doing so in honor and fear of God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Becky? Um, companies have embraced an open door policy. Mm -hmm. Christ himself who died on the cross invites us to come and reason with him. Mm. How be it that there is no reasoning in your family? Mm. Wow. <laughs> How is it that there is no reasoning in your family? Thank you so much for joining us through this study. Um, I know you have questions. I know you have comments to make. Please share them in your small churches. Yeah, like we've small shared here. And thank you because I know from today, I know from this week, we have been taught about sacrificial love. We've been taught to prepare ourselves, even as Christ is here just preparing the bride. Are we walking in line with him? Are we ready to sacrifice for our husbands, our wives? Are we ready to submit even as the world tells you that, you know what, you are equal? You know, are we able to submit to one another? Who are we submitting to first? Is it Christ or the husband first or the wife first? It's an array of questions. And there is hope even for the marriages that are struggling that Christ is still on the throne and he's still willing and able to do the restoration. Um, I'd like to end us, I'd like us to end the lesson here. Please join us next week again for lesson 11. Elder, please close for us with a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Almighty Father in heaven, we want to thank you on this Holy Sabbath day. We want to thank you for even uh, giving us a chance to discuss, study thy word, and at learning that the mothers, the fathers, through husband and wives at the cross is, an in, is indeed an institution that is established to honor you and give you honor and glory. 
May you bless this church. May you bless our Seventh-day Adventist church, the local churches, and even the um, global church, Lord, for us as we prepare to be received by you upon your second return, Lord. May you prepare us our bodies. May you prepare us so that we can meet on the final ceremony when you will claim us for eternal life, for we are prayed in Jesus' name.